Hi there students. In furtherance to this lecture of an uh, environmental law, the new facet that we are going to discuss is related to something which is very unique because when it comes to this particular facet of environmental law, not all the states are that active. Uh, this particular law primarily relates to something which the coastal states are much more concerned about. So coastal regions are something which I believe you all would like to visit any coastal areas for spending your holidays, your vacations, etc. Right? Uh, but at the same point of time, it also plays a very important, um, an important role, uh, you know, in environmental management. Because this coastal zone of a country itself, uh, it contributes a lot you know, the thing is that when it comes to coastal zones, uh, there are several values associated with it. It can be economic value, it can be aesthetic value, uh, you know, several. Uh, tourism is also related with respect to coastal zones. So in this lecture on coastal zone regulations in India, we will uh, deal with some of the important aspects of the laws relating to coastal management uh, and uh, some case laws also in addition to that. Now, when it comes to coasts in literally terms, you know, basically the coasts are the areas which are in fact, it's a band of uh, dry land. And uh, at the same point of time, it is also something which is adjacent to the ocean space in which the terrestrial processes and the land uses directly affect the oceanic processes and use and vice versa. And this is not the definition which is there in a book or dictionary. It is a definition which was, uh, uh, in fact, this is something which came out of an MIT press from 1972 uh, when B. H. Ketchum in his uh, particular work on, it was basically an outcome of a workshop which was organized way back in 1972 in MIT and this paper which Mr. K uh, you know, Ketchum was presenting it was on water's edge uh, critical problems of coastal zone because the workshop was exclusively on coastal zone. So uh, this was from 1972 when he came up with this definition the coasts are basically the areas that the band of the dry land and adjacent ocean space in which terrestrial processes and the land uses directly affect oceanic processes, uses and vice versa. So the thing is that our actions in the territorial, the territorial region in fact affects the oceans also at the same point of time, right? So uh, the coasts being a very dynamic in nature are usually influenced by so many ways around the world. These influences uh, such as for example the river systems which may of course have a you know, reach over the farm inland, increasing the complexity and the scale of the zone. Our escalation in human activity in these particular areas or the coasts have become a cause of great concern lately. And these activities uh, is not just, uh, you know, it's there like a n number of activities, which includes, say, constructions, especially for hotels, resorts, right? Because coastal zones are basically uh, you know, a very good hotspot for uh, tourism. So, uh, constructions uh, like hotels and, and not just that, but also mining activities, uh, other industrial activities are there. In fact, uh, you know, shrimp cultivation, you know, this is something which you must have heard about already. And shrimp cultivation had some adverse effect also with the coastal regions. So, uh, it is noted that around... Uh, these coastal margins that we have, 8% uh, of the world surface area is within this so-called so coastal margin. And um, only, you know, 25% of the global productivity arises from that. So a stress on this such kind of environment uh, comes with approximately 70% of world's population being within a day's walk of the coast. So two thirds of our world's cities are also across the coasts. These are some of the scintillating facts and figures which you can also find in a book which was published way back in 1989 
Common Property Resources, Ecology and Community-Based Sustainable Development by F. Burkish. So in that book, if you refer at that point of time, these were the facts and figures. And I'm pretty sure that over the period of time, we have uh, escalated in so many ways. Some of the coastal states which have um, always certain special interest in safeguarding their coastal areas involves several countries, including United States, United Kingdom, uh, Norway, for example, Italy, Sweden, Korea, Japan. So these are the countries with certain interests over the coastal regions. And when it comes to Asia, uh, of course, you have Sri Lanka, China and India. So they have all evolved their mechanism to protect and preserve their respective coastal zones. So this uh, management of coastal zones are basically related to the natural resources. Now, the thing is that uh, way back in 1982, when the United Nations Convention on Law of Seas was declared, it also defined maritime zones, right? And there was a certain belt of coasts which was defined because it recognized the rights of the coastal states were you know the jurisdiction over the resources which at that point of time were decided on 38 square nautical million square nautical uh, miles of the ocean space so this coastal states they have the right to exploit develop manage conserve all the resources which includes fish oil gas gravel nodules etc etc and when it comes to India, we have a coastline of around approximately 7,000 and it's 500 to 7,600 kilometers. And this coastline management is very essential. And that is the reason because of which India has also notified, uh, you know, uh, certain coastal regulations. And for that, you have to take back yourself to the Environment Protection Act, which I have already discussed. And if you refer to Environment Protection Act, if you refer to Section 3 to be very specific, and also the Environment Protection Rules, if you refer to Rule 5 of Environment Protection Rules 1986, there you will find, especially with respect to Rules 5, you know, Sub Rule 3, Clause D of the 86 rules, it declared uh, coastal stretches as coastal regulation zones. And the regulating activities is something which has been, uh, you know, clearly specified under the same. Now, the prime objective of this coastal regulation zone that we have in our country, it emerges out of the Environment Protection Act and central government accordingly notified this notification. Now, this notification was, uh, you know, uh, this was adopted, keeping in mind the economic activities, recreational facilities, in and around these coastal zones and that is something which gave them the idea the ministry of course the idea of coastal zone management sustainability and when you say sustainability of course you have to bring the balance of development on one side and environment protection on the other side so uh, you cannot also ignore the valuable minerals and resources fish for example are, are, are pretty much significant especially their importance with respect to uh, you know, human activities and development. And, and at the same point of time, construction of railways, roads, residential housing schemes, hotels, these are also, uh, respond, you know, responsible for degradation of coastal zones. But at the same point of time, these are also required for so many purposes. So it's a very challenging fact. And that's the reason uh, keeping in mind uh, the objective of preserving, conserving, protecting these coastal zones and its ecology, India adopted, India came up with this, uh, notification way back in 1991. So the first notification that we had, the C Coastal Zone Management Notification, which was previously guided by this Coastal Zone Management Notification of 1991. Now, the thing is that this 1991 notification has been recently replaced by the Coastal Regulation Zone uh, CRZ. So previous one was CZM and now it is uh, CRZ uh, over here I have written a CRZ notification of 1991 but it was basically CZM coastal zone management notification of 1991 which was replaced by CRZ so called coastal regulation zone of 19 2011 so 2011 is the latest one and uh, in addition to this environment protection act 1986 and 86 rules you should also refer to the national environmental policy of 2006 National Environmental Policy 2006 is very important because it declared, uh, you know, that we should take a very, the state should take a very comprehensive approach to integrate 
coastal management by addressing the nexus between uh, coastal areas, wetlands, river system in the relevant policies, regulations and programs. So this is what the national environmental policy clearly highlighted. So not just the, uh, you know, the notification, but also the environment policy of 2006 clearly, uh, you know, guided the state entities to adopt a comprehensive approach by keeping in mind the integration of so many avenues which are related in a way. And it's not just coastal zones. It also talks about river system. It also talks about wetlands, inland waters, etc. Now, this coastal regulation zone of 2011, which was uh, announced with an objective, uh, you know, there are certain objectives which were pre pretty much highlighted in that notification. Uh, these are the prime objectives of the CRZ notification of 2011. First and foremost, to ensure that the livelihood security uh, to the fisheries community as well as other local communities are protected. So this is a balance that they were talking about because they were referring to sustainability, coastal zones, sustainability, you know, that is what I mentioned, coastal zone management, sustainability, that was the idea. So they had to ensure the livelihood security of the fisher community and the other local community. The second was, uh, the second objective was to conserve and protect coastal stretches, its unique environment and its marine area. Right. This is the related to the ecological part of the coastal areas. The third objective is to promote development through sustainable manner based on scientific principles, taking into account the dangers of natural hazards. You know, remember in the initial classes on environmental law, I specifically talked about, um, you know, back then we had those lectures. Uh, it seems like history now, but the thing is that uh, initially we had these discussions on principles of international environmental law, right? And there I specifically mentioned about principle of preventive action, principle of precaution, right? And th there uh, we discussed about the scientific uncertainty, the factor of scientific uncertainty. So science play a very key, science plays a very key role in determining developmental related as well as environmental related policy measures. So that is the reason because of which they talked about sustainability manner only on the basis of scientific principles right so this particular CR set of uh, notification also talks about uh, promoting development through sustainable manner based on scientific principles taking into account the dangers of natural hazards in the coastal areas and finally another objective uh, is the uh, is to restrict is to restrict and set up or expansion any uh, sorry restricting the setting up and expansion of any industrial operations on the processes which involves uh, you know hazardous waste uh, man manufacture handling management etc etc so hazardous waste and industry uh, and its expansions is strictly prohibited in these so-called coastal areas these are the prime four objectives of the CRZ notification. However, in addition to this so-called four objectives, there are eight basic rules which are there in this particular notification. When it comes to the physical limits of this zone, the central government in fact declared that these coastal stretches of say seas or bays or estuaries, even creeks, rivers, backwaters, uh, they are they are basically influenced by something called tidal action, right? This tidal action is something where you will find this is something which I have already mentioned here. Just keep this in mind that uh, you know they have determined that this will be uh, based on influenced by tidal action in the landward side up to 500 meters from the high tidal line and the line on the land up to which the highest water line reaches during the spring tide. Let me be very clear uh, with respect to this. Just because uh, I, I have a demonstration where you can get an idea about this tide line. See, so from here, this low tide line, 12 nautical miles towards the sea. So that is where lies your CRZ4. So the CRZ4 is that particular area and this water area is off because it's influenced by tide so it's a very tidal influenced water body from the mouth of the water body at the sea up to the influence of the tide which is usually measured as five parts per uh, five parts per thousands during the dry season of the year so this is what crz4 then comes crz5 this areas are basically require this area requires special consideration because these areas have been identified for the purpose of protecting the critical coastal environment and certain difficulties which 
are of course faced by the local communities like for example there are certain vulnerable coastal areas in sundarbans of my home state west bengal and there are also certain other ecologically sensitive areas in say place called goa and uh, greater mumbai even kerala like backwaters of kerala backwater islands they are all crz5 because these areas the sundarbans of west bengal and the backwaters of kerala these are the areas which require special consideration so i insist you please refer to all those eight rules it's not that lengthy the notification it will not take your much of your time just go through these rules once to get an idea about the crz zones that have been there and when it comes to certain prohibited activities all new activities that have been prohibited in the crz one area so no prohibited activities is allowed at the same point of time and there are certain rules which are also kind of because uh, see for example if there is a project which is related to uh, nuclear power right so in that kind of uh situation um there are uh, specific reference uh, in this rules of the notification and the rules permit such projects which is related to uh, department of atomic energy or if it's with respect to pipelines conveying systems including transmission lines if it's with respect to any facilities that are essential for uh activities for the preservation of crz1 if it's with respect to say for example uh, meteorological purposes like for installation of weather radar for monitoring the cyclones movement and all uh, if it's with respect to say construction of trans harbor sealing without affecting the tidal flow of course and if it's for greenfield airport this is something which you must have already heard about so this development of greenfield airport is already um, you know approved even in the navi mumbai uh, coastal area so if it's for greenfield airport then also the rule permits such activities in crz1 this is something which is very crucial so any areas which is between this low tide line and high tide line if they are not ecologically sensitive area then some activities have been permitted uh, like say for example extraction of certain natural gases right then roads and you know, roads on certain stilts and pillars without affecting the tidal flow of water desanitation uh, desalination plants desalination plants of course then uh, salt harvesting by solar ev evaporation techniques uh, then you have this construction of uh, jetties and uh, drainage sewerage etc etc which are basically non hazardous and uh, doesn't affect the tidal layers. however at the same point of time when it comes to crz2 areas uh, the construction of buildings shall be permitted only only on the landward side so towards the side of the land of the existing road okay so or on the landward side of the uh, existing authorized structures which is already there so when it comes to existing uh, norms of the floor space index has been uh, clearly pres prescribed under the rules um and if there is an other activities say for example the desalination plant itself or any associated uh, facilities to that particular desalination plants etc etc in that kind of situation or if or say for example for uh, you know edible oil fertilizers food grains uh, uh, storage uh, so these uh, activities uh, have also been permitted under the crz2 areas while when it comes to crz3 areas which uh which are basically uh, because they have to market the uh, or coastal authority they have to ensure that the crz3 areas are marked as no development zone ndz so no development zone areas because construction activities are strictly prohibited except the construction and reconstruction of any dwelling units of say uh, coastal communities or local communities so when it comes to them like fish folk are there which are which may permit it up to uh, between somewhere around 100 to 200 meter from the high tide line along the sea front of course in accordance with the comprehensive plan that has to be prepared by the state government so here the state government has the authority to check in case by case basis and they have to apply their mind and um, when it comes to states they uh, each and every states coastal states especially they have uh, coastal zone management authority also and there are certain other like for union territories also there is a union territorial coastal zone management authority and uh, there is something called national center for sustainable coastal management authority uh this has been approved by the ministry of environment forest and climate change and they usually uh, uh in fact permit several activities in the no development zones which is a range of activities like horticulture agriculture gardens then mining of rare minerals salt manufacturing uh then you have the degasification of liquefied natural gases then for sure uh, 
facilities for desalination plants, weather radars, as I mentioned a while back, uh, then construction of dispensers, schools, public rain shelters, uh, auxiliary units relating to any uh, domestic sewage or treatment and disposal. Uh, for that, pollution control boards prior approval is also required. Although, uh, then uh, for dwelling units for the fishing communities or the local communities, then greenfield airports. So these are the things which are also there. When it comes to coastal zone uh, CRZ four, the traditional fishing and allied activities have been permitted. But the uh, discharge of pollution from any oil and gas exploration or even drilling, mining, all those things, are, well, for that you need to have a prior approval of the authority, so-called the Coastal Zone Authority. And uh, if you refer to the notification, you will find certain list of activities are prohibited even in the CRZ4, like setting up of any new industry, expansion of any indus existing industry, then manufacturing, handling of any hazardous substances, right? Then setting up of or expansion of any fish, processing units which includes warehouse also and then also setting up an expansion of any units for disposal of wastes and effluents from any entity so these are the things which are also there in crz4 clearly mentioned so in a way these are the factors which are pretty much taken into consideration by the coastal regulation zone so please do refer to uh, this particular notification because it is of huge importance Coming to the case laws, in fact, there are certain case laws which are quite pertinent with respect to coastal you know, zones. Uh, of course, there is a case called of uh, G, uh, G. Sundarajan versus Union of India. This is a case, very recent case from 2013 only, uh, 2013 volume 6, Supreme Court cases. Uh, 620 that is the citation so uh, G Sundarajan versus Union of India case is relevant because in that particular case the court made it very clear that the CRZ notification of 2011 it did not prohibit the projects which are already in operation or which has already been given certain environmental clearance prior to the date of issue of this particular notification of 2011 or even of 2000 and uh, sorry even of 1991 so in such case uh, what happened is there in this particular case so there was this nuclear power plant kundan kolan a nuclear power plant which was established way back in 1989 and it was done in collaboration with the Russia. So, with, but the notifications did not prohibit atomic power projects, which was already in existence and have also permitted these uh, so-called establishment of the same under the CRZ notification. So it was proved before the court that all necessary precautions with respect to the code of management of radioactive waste and other require, requisites which are there under the atomic energy laws have been taken into consideration. So this it was pretty much clear in front of the court and but despite the fact that a special life petition was filed in front of the court so uh, the court finally examined all the environmental aspects including the sustainability of the project in the area and finally approved the given project it was also something which is relevant with respect to that so uh, uh, this is something which uh, uh, you will also find um, in several other cases where developmental activities and uh, environmental protection kind of clashed with each other because there is another case i remember that is from lakshadweep uh, this is a uh, uh, cc uh, resorts case uh, th this was also pretty much made at that point of time only where uh, the uh, factor was that there was this uh, seashells beach resort which was uh, which was uh, going to establish over there and the court clearly held the honorable apex court clearly held that no resort could be commissioned under a judicial order by disregarding uh, any serious objections that has been raised by the administration which is of course in contravention or violation of i mean the establishment of the resort is in contravention of the crz notification so no permission can be granted um, by anyone for the construction of a resort in a no development zone this was also clearly held by the honorable apex court in uh, union territory of lakshadweep versus she sells beach resort case Another case which is also relevant is the Anil, uh, Anil Hoble versus Kashina Chitte. Uh, Anil Hoble's case is relevant as regards the construction which was of course in existence prior to uh, February 1991 when the first CRZ notice, CZM notification came into existence. Uh, 
Uh, so it was held that it will stay and any addition or alteration which is required by adding to that which falls under CRZ1 or 2 will be illegal and that should be demolished which was clearly held. Now the thing is that uh, these are some of the cases with respect to developmental activities but I believe there are three important cases, uh, three, basically I would say four, uh, which uh, set certain precedential value with respect to coastal zones and whatever literature you refer, I'm pretty sure you will come across these cases. One is, of course, the Indian Council for Environmental Legal Action versus Union of India. Now, this is the Green Green Lagoon Resort versus Union of India. Is Jagannath's case versus Union of India and Goa Foundation versus Deksha Holdings Private Limited. Now, Indian Environmental Legal, um, sorry, not Indian, uh, Indian Council for Environmental Legal Action versus Union of India case, where the Apex Court clearly examined the validity of two amendments. Uh, which also came subsequently after 1991 notification and the court declared that the reduction in the non-developmental zones from 100 meter to 50 meter was contrary to the objective of the environmental act so the amendment which in fact reduced the area because government was also pretty much you know uh, pro development so uh, the amendment in fact reduced the area of no development zones from 100 meter to 50 meter so that was also challenged and the court held that this is in contradiction to the environmental act so it was made not for uh, not with a very valid reason so the court disallowed the fencing which in fact hindered the public access to the beach and uh, as it negates the right to way of the general public which they are there with you know they have the freedom to enjoy this is something which was very relevant with respect to where judicial interventions played a very significant role with respect to coastal zone management then another case is the vamika island or uh, the green lagoon resort versus union of india case where it was also declared uh, by the honorable court that uh, the illegal construction in a prohibited area in this case it was crz1 area cannot be permitted and it should be demolished and it was also declared that any coastal area which is in question, which is very much critically vulnerable coastal area, this is the term that they have used, critically vulnerable coastal areas or so-called ecologically sensitive areas should be taken to uh, prime consideration and any kind of such activities should be totally uh, prohibited because there is, a, uh, there is an urgent need to protect such um, you know, uh, sensitive and fragile environment uh, ecology. So uh, then there comes the case of S. Jagannath versus Union of India. Now, this is relevant because this is with respect to uh, Chilka Lake. So uh, this is a landmark judgment in the field of coastal zone management, which is also known as the Chilka Lake case because it brought into light the fact that uh, CRZ notification was not implemented. There were certain notification which was enacted way back in 1991, but it never came into force. So the petitioner in fact filed a writ for stoppage of certain intensive and semi-intensive type type of, I believe you all love something called prawn or shrimps, those who are non-vegetarian. So shrimp cultivation was basically into, uh, in question. So uh, the prawn farming which was happening over there in near to Chilka Lake, it was affecting the ecologically sensitive coastal area of Chilka. So that was brought into the question and it came to the uh, you know, notice of the Honorable Apex Code. In fact, the Honorable Apex Code appointed the National Environmental and Engineering Research Institute, so-called NIRI, which is a Nagpur-based research institute, to visit Chilika Lake and prepare a report and submit the same. A report was prepared by NIRI, which disclosed that there was certain impact on the surface water as well as the groundwater and the soil water was contaminated because of the prawn farming. So the court took a note of it and it finally went ahead and it clearly said that um, you know the authority they didn't ensure there should be and it applied the polluter pace principle it also applied precautionary principle it in fact directed the central government to apply uh, implement these principles in true sense because this is a part of the law of our land and the authority should also recover the compensation for such shrimp cultivation and that compensation amount should be used for reversing the ecology and uh, you know the entire ecosystem of river Chilika. So this is Lake Chilika. Sorry, this is what was held in his Jagannath versus Union of India case, and that is the reason because of which is very important. And another, the final case that I am going to mention over here is the Goa Foundation versus Diksha Holdings Private Limited. Here, the Honorable Apex Court held that the hotel or any such constructions which has been done in CRZ3 area are as per the notification of 1991, and of course with the approval of uh, central government. 
uh, it is all legit so it can it is taken into consideration and the court also quoted with the approval of a uh, calcutta high court that it is now a well settled principle and i quote it is now a well settled principle of law that while dealing with the matter the social problems shall have to be dealt with in the way and in the manner it calls for since benefit to the society ought to be the prime consideration of the law courts and ecological balance being a social problem ought to be decided by a court of law so that the society may thrive and prosper without any affection unquote so uh, this is a beauty of the certain judgments in the field of environmental law and certain proactiveness of honorable judges also in several such cases which kind of uh, you know took the entire which raised the benchmark of environment protection or environmental judicial activism to be very specific to whole new level and this is what is also applicable for coastal regulation zones so in this lecture i have discussed all these case laws and some important uh, provisions and clauses which is there under the coastal regulations of our country i insist you refer to the materials uh, I, I'll, i'll send across the materials of course please do follow me on easyclass.com where i'm sharing the materials i'm going to share articles on coastal regulation zones but in addition to that i also insist you be able to read uh, the coastal regulation zones and these case laws that i have mentioned since you are not having access to the online um, you know database but i'm pretty sure that you will find all these case laws available on google so that is all i have for today's lecture so in the next lecture i'll touch upon some other facet of environmental law until then stay home stay safe take care